Hello and welcome to the short vort on the double parsha of Matos Masse. In Matos, we have the story where the Bnei Gud and the Bnei Ruvain uh, they asked to stay Aver Liyarde, not to go into Eretz Yisrael, but to populate in the fertile area that'll be good for their uh, for their their flocks, and, um, and then they'll also build for their family and for their children. And Moshe Rabbeinu gets upset. Uh, about that, he said, "You're giving priority to the animals, not to the not to your family." So there's a story about the Sfas Emes when he was uh, younger and still a young young boy, and he and his chavrusa stayed up all night long that they were learning Torah, and then they he overslept. So his grandfather, the Chidushe Harim, he lashed out to him and gave him Musser and Musser and on and on. And afterward, he didn't say anything, the Svas Emes. He was quiet and he absorbed it all. Afterwards, his friend, his Chavrusa, said, how come you didn't say anything? You were up all learning all night. That's why you overslept. So the, uh, ch- ch- the Svas Emes took that, our parsha, a chumash, and turned to the page of our parsha in Perik Lamid Beis, Pasuk Tes Zayin, Yid Zayin, where the Bnei Gad responded to the uh, angry Moshe Rabbeinu, the rebuke of Moshe Rabbeinu by saying, uh, we're going to make pens for our tzon and we'll build for our our, uh, our mikna, our, our flock, and then we will go quickly, we'll arm and go to battle. We're not shirking our, our duties. They finally answered Moshe Rabbeinu, 12 sukkim of rebuke. And that's what he learned. He says, the Sfasema says, I didn't want to interrupt the the great Musa I'm learning from my grandfather because he's rebuking me. That's something you want to take advantage of. You want to hear what he has to say so you can internalize it and make yourself better. Even if you have a reason, even if you have proper justification, even if you're not even wrong. There's a great level in hearing rebuke from a great person, whether it's the Chudish Harim or Moshe Rabbeinu. Moving on in the travels to Masay. So in Masay, we have uh, the story. It says in Parak Lama Gimel Pasuk Dalad, who Velohem Asa Hashem Shvatim. It says that going back, that Hashem did judgment to the gods of Egypt. However, if we go to Parshas B'Shalach in Shemos, so it says, Uvachol Elohei Mitzrayim Asa Shvatim Ani Hashem. I will strike all the gods of Egypt. Yet here it only says doesn't say all the gods. It says just implying just some of the gods. What has changed? Why why didn't Hashem strike all the gods? So if we look back by Parshas B'Shalach, Hashem was telling the future all the way up to Kriyas Yamsev. In Egypt, on the night of uh, of Makas Bechoros, not only were the Bechoros struck, not only did the Jews die in the darkness so that the Egyptians wouldn't notice, the ones that didn't want to leave Egypt, uh, but also the gods of Egypt were all destroyed, except one, and that was Baal Zephon. And the reason why all the gods but this one god was destroyed was so that the Egyptians would still be able to rationalize chasing after the Jews, saying, hey, the Jewish god's not so strong, Baal Zephon is stronger than the Jewish god because he's still around. So they chased the Jews so that they would be, they'd be destroyed in, in, into the Yamsuf, and the Jews would get their money. And then at the same time, then Hashem finished what he originally promised. He also destroyed Baal Zephon. So all in the future from the time of the original promise were done. However, now in our Pasuk in, in Paragalama Gimel Pasuk Dalad, we're talking about the night of the 15th, Makas Bechoros, and then the Jews went out. That then it wasn't all the, the Egyptian gods destroyed. It was all but one. Therefore, looking back, we don't say, call the gods. We just say Elohim, the gods, but not all of them. So, but now, but when again, going forward, uh, when they were pre- Hashem was predicting, then it really was all the gods ultimately were destroyed by the time of Kriyas Yamsev. And this is by the Birka Sashir, which is cited in, in uh, the Mayano Shel Torah, who's also the source of the other story earlier. But he says one or more th- idea that follows up on this theme, that Yisro, he says that uh, because of this, Yisro finally, uh, at Kriyas Yamsev, he says, Ata yidati ki gadol Hashem mikol Elohim. 
Akriyas Yamsa, he says that now I know that God is greater than all the gods. Why only by Kriyas Yamsa did Yisra wait to, to say that God is greater than all the gods? This goes back to what we just said, that there was one God who survived in Egypt, and that was Baal Safon. And even and, and Yisra, who was a priest beforehand, he was having potentially some doubts, because, well, maybe Baal Safon, there's something to Baal Safon if Hashem didn't destroy him. But now at Yam, Kriyas Yamsa, when even Baal Safon was destroyed, this proved finally, once and for all, to Yisro that God is the greatest, Mikol Elohim, Mikol Elohim, because it's when talking about false gods, you do say the He and Elohim, it's only when you avoid saying a reference to Hashem, not in a Pasuk, that you make it Elohim. So we have the lessons here about that, you know, of course God is all-powerful, all and it's good to listen to uh, the, the Musar of our Gedolim. Uh, thank you, have a wonderful week. And one of wonderful parsha. May we have the Gulish name of Bimhira very soon.